You guys are used to hearing me from behind the camera. Today I've got a camera person. Hi Jess. Hi. So today we're rebuilding some carburetors and uh, we're going to need some tools for that. And what's the most important tools we got? Our hands. So I like to use these gloves and uh, these are not like super expensive but still they're about 50 cents each so I like to reuse them. Leave them turned inside out when I took them off last time. And, uh, use them again. Eventually you get a hole in them for sure, especially if you use carburetor cleaner, um, which we're not going to do this time around. So, uh, bike's a Virago. It's my wife's bike and uh, you'll notice today we're working in the kitchen and uh, I guess that's the most important thing about working on motorcycles. you got to have a good wife understands things that, uh, like if you're going to tear your carburetor's fire in the kitchen <laughs> and she doesn't want to divorce you. So, here we go. Uh, we got a set of carbs that are real clean and uh, fresh out of the pine saw dip and uh, Yep, that's it. We use pine saw after stripping the bodies down you uh, put them in there at least overnight and then Take them out wash them off and oil them right away so that uh, you don't get any flash rust and uh, the end result is really nice clean carbs these carbs are Kind of complicated. I mean, there's all the parts that go in the front one and we got all the parts that go in the rear one. And if you take it apart far enough to get down to here, uh, which we'll see all those parts later, then you're doing it right. If uh, someone just pulls the jets out and blows some air through them and says, hey, yeah, I cleaned your cars, uh, they're not. <laughs> they're not clean, the bike's not gonna run that well. If you wanna come over here, we'll see all the tools that we need for the job. So a uh, 14 millimeter wrench, a good, uh, flat screwdriver uh, with a kind of medium sized tip. We'll get into that later. A good Phillips and uh, this one was a gift from my lovely wife. Uh, Snap-on. It's got ratchet action but what's really important is it's got what this tip has a uh, I think they call it ACR or something. It's got little teeth on it and it really helps bite those screws. So we need one of those pliers. Pretty standard. Another uh, flat screwdriver, this one a bit smaller, also in good shape. If your screwdriver is in bad shape, you're going to have problems that we don't want to understand. So go spend three dollars, get a good screwdriver, and uh, don't waste a bunch of money fixing jets later. I also have some lubricants and whatnot, and we'll get into that as we go. So, the carburetors on your bike, uh, this one being a Virago, have a front and rear uh, positioning and you want to kind of keep them identified the whole time in the process. In my case I cheated a little bit and I left uh, a couple of the brackets on so you'll see here there's a wheel where the throttle cable goes and I left that one on. That's your rear carb so if we're looking at it on the engine and uh, you on the bike it would be sitting just like that and your front carb will be sitting like that. The way that they connect together is with these linkages here and you'll see that they fit together nicely. I don't know if you can see that but we'll get into that and that involves synchronizing the carbs. Um, we're gonna put these together individually and get them as far together as we can before connecting them uh, back together on the rack. And ultimately we're gonna have something that looks like this. So I've got a template to go by. You might not. Instead you got this video. Okay, so uh, let's begin at the beginning. I'm going to take the front carburetor and pull out its parts here. Now, um, when we took these apart last night, I saved all the gasket material and o-rings and I'm not buying a kit for them putting them together today so hopefully everything will work and we can save about forty dollars in unnecessary cost if it doesn't work and we have a leak or whatever then we'll go ahead and have to take them all apart again but thankfully we have a video put it all back together <laughs> so some carbs are really easy they've got about two jets and maybe one tube and they're not that hard to figure out. This carb had a lot of little parts and we'll go into that. I hope the lighting's good enough that we can see here. But is it ever handy not having to carry the camera? So 
each carb has all these same parts which I'm laying out and there are a couple of really unique ones and we'll get into that in a minute. I just want to put that where I won't not see it. <laughs> Got these little plugs here. And what else? Another jet. <laughs> Another jet. Oh, and there's the pilot jet. Holy cow. We got an O-ring here. There's our... Oh. Come here, you. Okay. Well, I guess we could have staged that out of the video, but now we got a bunch of screws. Okay. So, get a little pointer here. We got all kinds of parts that are going to go back inside this carburetor. Uh, this guy here is related to the choke uh, system or the enriching circuit is what they end up calling it. Uh, it basically goes in this tube in the carburetor and when you put the choke on you pull that up and you let some fuel flow through there. When I took these out they were lubricated up here with a nice kind of white grease so I'm going to use some of my own white grease and put that back on there. Not a whole lot, I mean it's just something to kind of keep it lubed in there and able to move over time and um, we don't really need any grease down there but since I got just a little bit on my finger we'll put a little film on there so it's nice and smooth action and it basically is going to drop in that hole and as I'm dropping it in there it actually feels pretty tight so I think what we're going to do is just give it a little squirt of lube in there. The way we clean these is uh, fairly harsh as far as it really gets down there and takes any oil out and in some cases you need to re-lubricate the part. So this plunger, I want it to have a nice smooth action. and It's not bad. But it could be a little better. So in fact, what I'm going to do just kind of polish that up a bit. Paper towel here. And a little more of this grease. And I guess just the dab will do it. Oh, and we dropped the part. All dirty so we can start all over again. But that's real life. Mm -hmm. So you may ask, why are you watching a YouTube video of some guy putting a carburetor together? I wonder the same thing, but I wanted this video to uh, help people who otherwise maybe didn't have the manual or were just handed these things and had no idea how to put them together. Plus, I find that as you teach something, you get to really fully understand it yourself. And uh, So, bear with me. I mean, if you think, hey, this guy's just full of it, oh well, you can move on and watch somebody else's video. But stick around here, and we're going to have ourselves a carburetor put together before we're done. Alright, where'd that little spring go? That was just there. Come on now. Are you kidding me? camouflage parts okay so that guy's gonna go in there and this little nut here with the with the rubber cap on it is going to go on there as well we're just gonna cinch that down and that's where our 14 millimeter wrench comes in you don't want to put a whole lot of weight on the car body when you're torquing fasteners so see how it's got this nice face if you put that down on a solid place you can hold on and put your uh, wrench on it now remember it's upside down so we got to go the wrong way in this case and how tight is it well oh, that tight it's not holding the bike together but it's on there I don't like how it's got that little bit of ugly so just clean that up a little bit and got ourselves an enriching lever look at that nice action that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so choke part is done in the carburetor. Next, I'm going to put together the block. 
This carburetor is special in that most will have a jet in this hole that just kind of uh, provides the fuel and uh, shoots it up through that hole. This one's special. It's got a block and there's different jets that fit in this block as well as plugs. So you want to be paying attention when you take your carburetor apart uh, to get this put back together properly. So again, being as dry as it is, I'm just gonna give that a little squirt, help those go in. So basically you've got uh, three holes in the back uh, on the flat face and you've got this, I know that the main jet goes in there and then a couple other jets go in here. This guy here with uh, the long, oh, look at that, see there my glove blew up. So I better go find me another one of those. Um, it's long, it's got the holes in it. It goes in the center hole of the tube. And this is where having that screwdriver with just the right size tip is going to help you turn that gentle brass piece of metal in and torque it without causing it any undue harm. The second jet that's going in in the smaller hole is the pilot jet. It looks like that and it's easy to distinguish from the rest because, well, it looks like that. Notice it's got a very small tip on it and that screwdriver is not going to work. That's where this guy comes in. Pick it up at uh, Canadian Tire or wherever you buy your tools. See how much torque I put in that one. She's got a bend in her. Oh. Again, just tight enough. These had plugs in them. Big plug, I assume, is going to go in the big hole. Small plug is going to go in the small hole. And uh, from what I remember, taking them apart, there's flats and they were facing each other. So you can see the flats. I don't know if that's showing up good on the camera with the light, but that's how she goes. So then on the bottom here is this nice gasket that I've gone and got all wet with oil, which I don't think is going to really harm it. So I figure we'll saturate the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, it uh, goes on here and comes in that $40 kit uh, so far that we haven't needed. Um, if you look, there's also this little O-ring. And I'm looking at that to try to figure out which way that it went on. I didn't bother cleaning this with anything caustic. We just cleaned it in the ultrasonic cleaner uh, with the jets, but we'll get into that in a moment. And it basically sits on this hole. And since we were using it, we're going to want to make sure we get that kind of really on there square. Because if it's going to jump around like that, we're going to have a problem. We want that to be right where it was when we took it all apart. And then this bad boy is going to sit in there thusly. Come on. That's the way. Now in your pile of random screws, there are two that have these captive little washer dude hangers on them. One of them is longer and one of them shorter. If you look at your jet block, you'll see that there's a short spot for the short guy and a long spot for the long guy. And then Put her in the drive. Now, the trick to this, we're reusing that gasket, is you want this down nice and even. So, put a little bit of tension on it on this side. Back over here, a little bit of tension. Feeling it stiffening up. Back over here. Get. Oh yeah, a good, good little tweak on there. These are small, so they don't need to be torqued crazy, but you want them torqued. So there you go. Nice. Jet block is installed. Everything looks good. And even that O-ring is probably in pretty good shape because it's right down the middle. Now, in here, I know I had a jet. And, of course, when I took this all apart last night, 
I wrote this down because I would never have remembered. Now this is the front carburetor that we're working on and it had a 140 main jet. Ooh. And these jets are so clean and beautiful thanks to my wife's ultrasonic jewelry cleaner which again she totally understands. If you're not cleaning your carbs ultrasonically you're not doing it right as far as I'm concerned that the amount of crud that comes off these after you've sprayed them for half an hour with carb cleaner you'd be amazed. Okay that one says 145 now it says 140 I think my eyes are still working so the 140 or main jet I'll try to get out of the light is going in that hole that's kind of shaped on a 45 degree angle and I like to spin them down by hand then getting a properly fitting flat screwdriver well, you try to get as square as you can on it and torque it home it's not crazy it's just a small amount and if you don't you want to get crazy with them you're gonna end up looking like that or worse and you'll never get that out of there like that's been drilled oh it's awful don't be a gorilla on your jets and use the proper style screwdriver and we won't have to have that problem all right that's my 140 this one here is an 80 and this one here is for later on okay so in your jet uh, package we'll call it find the jet that's marked 140 I'm sorry 145 you stand corrected let me find that puppy again man is that ever hard to read I gotta look in the light here 145. 145. Turn your carburetor over. And if you look, there's a hole here in the top. Uh, yeah. And that's where you put that 145 jet. So she goes on there. Nice and square. If you if you turn it backwards in the hole at first, well, and you're not jumping your hand all over the freaking place, you'll feel it catch a thread ah what a disaster don't try to turn it in there if it's not square that's what I'm trying to say but doing it on film sometimes is not as easy come on there you go so once you have it standing up properly in the hole then you can turn that puppy home now notice as it gets closer to the carburetor, it's like up against the car body. You don't want to damage that, so just make sure you're nice and square. Give that a tweet. She's home. So, now that we're here at the top of the carburetor, I guess we can kind of finish things up. So we've got that jet in there. Up here is a tiny spot for this little o-ring, which you hopefully didn't lose when you took her apart and left in your driveway for for dead. See that's in there now? And we got ourselves, oh wait now, yeah, a diaphragm here. So the diaphragm, when we cleaned her up, we gave it a light lube. If you'll notice, there's a tick in the rubber and there's a matching tick in the carburetor body. So don't even try to slide it in there without kind of starting that first. So there, we're there and there, and then you, oh, you know what, I got ahead of myself. Whoa, back that up, boys and girls. I forgot that there's a jet that has to go in here first. So, this emulsion tube jet thing, whatever we call it, it's got a um, line in it, and in the carburetor, um, base here there's a small ball bearing little tick so you want that line to be lined up with that tick so that it can go all the way down into the bottom of the body so from the top we just drop it in more or less actually this is where our you know those will come in handy you can drop this guy in oops 
and pull it back out. <laughs> All right, the ball bearing is on this side, so we want the tick to be on this side. How am I going to get you in there? Oh. Just helping it down there to find the hole. So see how it's just sitting there, it's waiting to fall down in there before you get too crazy. Check in your hole, make sure that yeah it's lined up because it's harder to turn once it's in there. And then she should just kind of fall right in there. Now, that's assuming you got that o-ring right and the way she's catching there, I don't think that it's, it's happy. But, this is real life not make-believe carburetor rebuilds this real life so we're gonna have to just back ourselves up a little bit here thankfully I didn't gorilla tighten those screws so they should just come right back out and we're gonna do this a little unconventionally So to make sure that this sucker lines up the way we want. Oh. Okay, now we gotta really get our mind wrapped around this. We want that tick to be over here. as a nice placeholder we can then place our crusty old o-ring it's probably going to cause me much grief in the future because I reused it oh come on now don't you break on me You go, you want, you want to be part of this carburetor. So ease it on there. Don't get crazy. It's old. It might have been on there since 1983, for all we know. And uh, it's going to go back on there now until who knows when. All right. Now this bad boy. Back in his home, still holding that tube in place, working it with one hand now, ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, just drop that screwdriver, why don't you? All right, we'll come back to torquing those in a minute because since I got to do this all kind of actually. So, since we're doing her and since we're here, washer goes there. And this bad boy that you thought was just a screw is actually a jet of some kind. And you know that if you ultrasonically clean it and you see all the schmutz that comes out of it. This one wants a big screwdriver. I only have kind of a small one, so I'm cheating. But make sure it's square and don't be a he-man on it. And you can probably get away with cheating once in a while. Okay, that's holding the tube now for me so I can torque these bad boys the way they're meant to be. A little bit for you, a little bit more for you, and there we go. So, lots of love. Oh, that's working well. Now, back to the diaphragm. The part that we talked about gets lined up. Put her in there and just kind of feel it like it should be pretty smooth see this one's feeling ratty oh 
Oh, does that ever feel righty? So, long and short, thicker thin Vaseline will get her in. In this case, release all. I wouldn't use WD-40. It's gonna probably evaporate by the time you get the bike started. But let's put a little bit of this in there and see how she feels. Oh yeah, that's much better. It doesn't sound great though. It's almost like it needs a bit of polishing. I mean, I'll give her that. It is an old bike. So these diaphragmies go in here. There's a rim all around there that they sit in and you want it in there proper. You don't want it sticking out or doing anything crazy. You can't have any pinhole leaks or any of that stuff and it should move fairly smoothly. This one's kind of, oh yeah, there it goes. It just needed to kind of feel its way a bit, I guess. Maybe just a little smidge of lube in there. So yeah, you can see that it's in there nicely and basically what happens is as you step on the gas There's some vacuum created on the engine and it will pull up on this diaphragm and in doing so If you see the slide in there it causes that slide to open And if you're going like there it would be wide open throttle effectively letting the most air in and idle It would be more or less closed for our purposes, just get it kind of in there, make sure that it works, and everybody's happy, we're ready to go. Make sure that O-ring is still there. And, find your spring. So the spring is what actually sends that bad boy home when the time comes. And I believe that's all we got. Now, putting this on, you've got the O-ring that lines up with this. And Little did you know, there's a jet in there. So if you didn't clean that properly, then you didn't clean your carbs right, and you might have a problem. This lines up with a nub in there, and you basically want to squarely, nicely, just set it into place like that. Now, out of your screws, you got a bunch of M5s. They'll be metric screws. And I'm pretty sure on these, the short ones are in the bowls and the long ones are in the caps. And uh, if you put the long ones in the bowls, they'll crash into parts on the bottom. You don't want to have that. With these carbs, and most carbs I reuse the screws, if they start to get bad, you change them. Because, like, that one's starting to go. And for this purpose, we're going to reuse it. So, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Basically, I'm keeping the pressure even on the cap so that nothing goes on underneath. We don't disturb the O-rings or anything. And I'm going to take one screw down just until it touches the lid so I can feel it like snug up. And then I go opposite him, go down so it touches the lid, just snug it up a bit. Go over here. And the reason for this is you want that even um, pressure all the way around. Especially these old parts and whatnot, you know, it's not like brand new ceiling gaskets and everything that'll make up for that differential. So I'm gonna give it the best opportunity it can. So now here, how do I put pressure on that? Well, here's a kind of a flat face. So if I set that down here, I'll be able to then hold the carb and tighten these screws. There's a torque specification for them, I'm sure. But you use common sense. You look at the screw, you go, okay, this one's a kind of a beefy screw. It can take a little bit more torque than, say, this one. I mean, if you put the same amount of twist on that one as this one, you could snap that easily. But this one can take a bit more. So usually the idea is if they built it with that, they can take it. And in this case, everything's looking okay. Now, as I screwed that on, I realized that I think there's a um, bracket goes in here and I don't want to lead anybody astray so just before we get too crazy nope this one's actually no bracket so we're okay we'll wait now that doesn't, that doesn't make sense at all oh yeah that's right yeah so 
the front part. Okay. So, false alarm. All right. So look at that. We're down to very few parts left. <laughs> we have here the um, float spring and uh, seat. I don't know what we call it. I guess the gas cutoff. Basically, it's kind of like a toilet. Gas flows in, gasoline in this case, and fills this bowl up. And when the bowl, I should say, as the bowl fills up, there's this float that sits in here. So this sits on your bike like this. Gas comes in here and flows down there through this valve, fills this bowl up. And then as it fills up, that float will push this valve closed. So there's the tip of the valve effectively. It goes up in this seat. And so I'm going to drop it in there. It's got a little spring in the bottom of it. So this guy goes on there and now as you can see the float presses that to close the valve. So gas running, gas running, oh gas shuts off and then as the bike burns it, oh let some more gas in. If you have a problem where your bike sits and pours gas all over the place then likely what it is is that this thing's stuck open and the gas is just free to flow. It goes in, fills the bowl up, pours all over the ground. So if you have that problem then you gotta get in there and fix those seats. Now that we're this far, we're gonna go ahead and do the blow test. So if you plug, let me see here, this hole and blow this hole. Oh no, no, wrong way. I don't know if you heard that or not, but you could hear air, no air. And you know, I like the taste of WD-40, so I don't mind doing that for somebody. Doing that little test saves you from having to take this all apart again because that stupid thing didn't hold air and didn't hold gas. Okay, do we have any other parts laying out here that relate to that carburetor? I think not. So we can go ahead and put the bowl on. Bowl's got a little gasket where we're using it, so we just want to make sure it's clean. And that's pretty darn clean. So we're going to go ahead and post this. Oh, we're, we're having a change of, uh, change of shift. We're almost there, Jess. You're giving up. Oh, I was really tired. Ah. All right, we got a new camera, and you guys on YouTube can leave a comment and tell me if uh, he's better or not. <laughs> so, bowl screws are these kind of mid shorty sized ones that match the ones that are in the top, but are shorter. They're M5 if you want to exchange them, you know, for nice Allen key type ones or whatever you want to do. I'm reusing. If we do a video about taking these apart, and we'll show you how you can get some of these stubborn ones off that don't want to come, and why you should own uh, what they call a JIS screwdriver. I don't have one, but these screws are not really Phillips. They're actually a Japanese standard, and even though Phillips fits them, they're not technically correct, I guess. So, gotta love the snap on. I think it's called ACR bit in it, Grazer. Maybe that has something to do with a gun in a video game, but the bit has those teeth. I think it was written on there, in fact. Oh, easy. We'll call it SDM222IRB. That's what the, uh, the number is. Yeah, ACR, they call it. And that is amazing. Those little fingers really grab onto these screws. All right, uh, maybe I'm being fanatical, but I see a spot that we missed when we're cleaning the balls. Yeah, that's getting a little crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this and get in there and mm, these are torquing. Like they've never been torqued. Mm, or probably been torqued 10 or 20 times. If you own a Brago, Try to clean these things out more times than you care to admit to other people. That's okay. So, got ourselves a carburetor. It's more or less together. Does it work? I can't pick that. Oh, yeah, it does. Now, the last jet is laying out here. It's an 80. It's an 80. It's an air inlet jet, and it goes right here. You'll see guys with these. Uh, this is all busted off, and it's because they use the wrong screwdriver. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that, but... 
each time I take apart a carburetor that's been broken like that, I feel sad. And there we have it. That's still working pretty good. Yeah, good enough for the girls we go with. So as you can see, she's pretty clean. She turned out real nice. I like the process we're using. Notice just a little bit of flash rust and the odd spot, which I mean I can live with. Most of that we can rub off. Okay, on this side we got the uh, air cutoff valve. Don't want to forget him. I'm gonna put a little lube in there because I like that. And that's what the air cutoff valves look like. They're about 15 bucks. And what happens is as you uh, close your throttle, um, it creates a vacuum, goes whoa, and it pulls this thing up, shook, and it just opens up. It actually makes that sound, shook, and it opens up a passage in the carburetor um, that I believe leans out the mixture, and it prevents backfire, it prevents the bike from like going bang when you let off the gas. And if you have a bike that likes to bang when you let off the gas, then that's probably what's going on, is this thing ain't working right. So just like the diaphragm on the top, you want it in there and not too tight and not, you know, whatever, lined up good. This also had a little vent hole jet thing that's hard to clean. These carburetors in general are actually pretty darn hard. You want, you want an easy car, you go do like the Kawasaki from the 70s. These ones are a little trickier. So when we push down on that spring, it's going to seat that thing back home and everybody's going to be happy. Just want to make sure it's all good and lined up because I only want to put this down once. Oh man, that's got some pressure on it. All right, so this guy's held on by these really small, um, probably M4s, screws. And these guys are the reason why you have to separate these carbs and clean them because you can't get this apart if you don't separate them. Oh, I know the lighting's terrible. But, what do you expect? This ain't Hollywood. This is real vintage bike building in the kitchen. boys and girls what screws have we got left we got screws for a bracket this little e-clip that's one of the specialty items that we talked about earlier in the video and this screw now I know for a fact that that screw just holds that accelerator throttle cable bracket on there that's easy and these four kind of mid-length maybe 10 millimeter they hold this bracket on when we're all finished but we're not quite there yet so instead we've got one complete carburetor second verse same as the first okay hit the what hit the that button up uh, mm -hmm. and we'll pause 